All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Synology B drive, which is something completely different than anything Synology's made before. And actually, when I first saw this, I did not think it was actually real. I didn't think it would be actually released fully. And I just thought it was a bit of a joke at first, but it's actually here. And it's a truly interesting product. So the Synology B drive is actually just a off the shelf SSD that comes with really good software that can essentially turn your Windows machine or soon to be Mac device into effectively a Synology NAS when it comes to photo backup, file syncing, and computer backup, and things like that. And overall, it brings honestly a lot to the table for a very specific audience. So the audience they're targeting with this are effectively the people who would not buy a Synology NAS because it is simply too complicated, which is absolutely true. NASes are complicated. Synology does their best to make them as simple as possible, but they are fundamentally complicated because you're managing an entire server. And there's always a trade-off whenever you're developing software where if you add too many features for your advanced users, it becomes too complicated for your basic users. And so that's kind of what the B drive, I think, is designed to really work around. Their target audience are the people who just could not deploy a NAS or don't want to because of the unnecessary complexity of running your own server. This is simple. You know where your files are, you can see it, you can feel it, you can grab it, and you still have the ability to carry it around with you. You can't really get hacked because as far as I can tell, it's really only accessible on the local area network. It is really designed to be super simple to use and just kind of work. Originally when this came out, I was actually really excited because I actually thought they had added in battery and Wi-Fi into this thing so you could just mobily back up your phone, but I was wrong. It runs off of a laptop. So really it is a standard SSD in here with just bells and whistles from a software perspective. There's no way to connect to this without a machine. And that's actually probably my biggest gripe for it, where I think that they really missed out on a lot of users, is I wish this device would work independent of a computer. It would be awesome if you could plug this into a phone and have it start backing up the phone's images or an iPad. Because I see a lot of the target audience that they are going for honestly have given up on having a computer and just use an iPad as their primary desktop. I know a lot of people who have done that because now everything's on the web page anyway. So you can actually get by with just like an iPad and a phone. And so I do wish they had added that software in there. This device does require to be plugged into a Windows computer and there is a client coming for Mac OS soon apparently as well. All right, so now a few technical pieces about it. It is a standard SSD. It comes in two versions right now, one terabyte, and two terabyte with 130 US dollars and 200 US dollars respectively. People are going to complain that that's too small because you can get a much larger SSD. In reality, the target audience for this device likely will not fill up more than 250 gigs of this. I bet the majority of people who purchase this and actually use it don't have 250 gigs of space at all that they're even using because this is really designed to back up documents, photos, things like that. It's not really designed to have these massive video files on it. That's just not what this target audience has, in my opinion. So if you take that price and look at other external USB SSDs, it is very expensive. Not absurd, but very expensive. But that is not really what this thing is marketed as or sold as. It's actually like an external SSD last. The first thing it really is, is software. That is kind of what it is set up as. Whenever you plug into machine, the first thing you do is you install the entire software on that machine, which effectively turns that computer and this drive into a NAS in a sense. As soon as you install it, you can back up your phone, computer files, and even sync files between different computers. It actually works very easily. Currently, there is only a Windows client, though a Mac OS one is apparently on the way. I also did want to say Synology did send this to me for free for this review, though I will be sending it back and it is still in a completely independent review. This is not the product that is necessarily targeted towards me. And so to figure out how easy this is to set up for somebody who's not necessarily super tech savvy and not constantly doing this stuff like I am, I'm going to give Katie this as well as the quick start guide. And that's pretty much it. And we're going to see how long it takes her to actually be able to back up her iPhone photos to the device. Because it is Windows only, I'm actually going to set up remote desktop and boot this desktop into Windows and remote desktop from my laptop into that. So it's going to look probably not the best, but hey, 
you gotta do what you gotta do because right now there is no Mac OS clients and I don't have a Mac laptop anywhere around and all my Windows devices are virtual machines that I don't wanna deal with USB passer right now. And so we're going to run this test and see how easy this is to set up because that's really what this device is sold as. A super easy way to back up your computer and your phone and be able to sync files between different computers. And so let's go ahead and see how that is. Okay, so I'm gonna follow the instructions. I'm gonna plug this to the computer. And then, oh, there's my folder. There it is. All right, it's installing. And I also need the app on my phone, maybe? asking me to sign in with my Synology account. I can continue with Google. I do not know what my password is. I want to do a mobile transfer. Okay. Scan the QR code. Wow. Okay. Back up all my photos. Start back up. And it's going. Wow. Four minutes and seven seconds. Wow, cool. I didn't even have to plug it in my phone into the B drive. So how, how do you think it was to set up the B drive? It was very easy to set up the B drive. Well, I think mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. All right, so that was actually super informative. Katie was able to get her phone backing up to the B drive, assuming she was already like signed into her Windows computer in about four minutes and 17 seconds, which I think is very impressive. I think most people should probably be able to do this. I think the steps on screen were very easy to follow. There's a huge pro on that. And playing through the app, it's actually quite easy to use. Every time you use a different feature, it basically adds them to the top level of this and it kind of forces you to keep your drive organized, which I actually don't mind. For example, mobile backup. You can come in here and you can see all of the images throughout time on there. You can also see that there is a B drop that allows you to really easily send files from your phone to your computer with one click. And that actually worked quite well. You can also do specific images or anything like that. And it works quite well. And it boom, just shows up right there. I think that it makes it very simple for your average user who is not computer savvy at all to use. Really the B drive is just glorified software hooked up to an SSD. There's actually no reason why you could not have this thing hooked up to any drive or even the internal drive on your computer. It is essentially just really good software wrapped around hardware. A couple other things it can do. It can do a pretty basic computer backup where it just says, boom, you wanna back up which of these folders and it will just go ahead and do it. It is super easy, two clicks and it just starts running. Overall, there aren't a bunch of complex settings that you have to pick from whenever you're setting up a backup or anything like that. It just kind of is super quick. You just click, 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 and it's just done with pretty common sense defaults. There's a little bit of additional customization you can do where you wanna have versions of files and archival of files, but that's pretty much it. I do like how it forces everything to be organized. We can see we just enabled the PC backup, and now you can just see, boom, here are all the files. And they really just took the Synology Drive software and the Synology Photo software and just kind of repackaged it in a form for people who do not want an ask.
Another actually really useful feature I think it does have is it's got the ability to do a file sync between computers. So you can just say, every time this drive is plugged in, go ahead and sync these files to these different things. And so every computer you're on has the same files and the same folders. This is actually something I was always trying to do, well, actually back in middle school with USB thumb drives, trying to figure out how to keep stuff like that in sync. So I do think there is a lot of value in this for specific people. But one thing I actually did not realize until actually getting this is this is really just a off the shelf SSD with really solid software behind it. When I first saw the B drive, I actually assumed that it had Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and would actually be able to back up your phone directly, but that's just not the case. Instead, all the B drive is doing is basically turning your computer into a, a Synology NAS with a very basic software. So you've got your photo backup, you've got your basic sync, you've got computer backup, you've got all that really simple stuff that does make it easy. All right, so overall, what do I think of the Synology B drive? So overall, I think it is a very good device for the specific user they're after. However, that user is cut down a lot from what I originally thought when I thought this could actually just directly back up a phone without a computer. So I think the user who's actually gonna find this really useful are people who are not as tech savvy, but are still using computers. So they still have a computer that they plug into every day and maybe even a couple. So they go between their laptop and their desktop and they want an easy way to be able to sync their files. This could also be good for people who have a desktop on often and can just basically have the B drive software running in the background on there and just always being able to back up their phones off of that. I think overall they've done a very good job of making it incredibly easy to set all of these tasks up. Really, it is very streamlined. There's not a lot of gotchas and it kind of forces you down the path of least resistance, which I think is good. The computer backup options are great. It just, with one click, you back up your documents folder, your user folder and everything like that. And it keeps deleted files, which is exactly what people probably want with it. They don't necessarily need versions, but if they have that, they've got it. And so it makes it very, very, very simple for people to understand and start using. I wasn't able to test out the sync, though I'm assuming that works just as well. So one thing I do wish they did is I wish they by default did not just put every image in the top level folder like they've done right here. So right here you can see every single image is just at the highest level. So that means that when you open it up, you're just overwhelmed by images and it's kind of hard to actually see anything on here. So I do wish they did a better job with that because I think it would be very nice to be able to have at least year, month, day, because I think that that makes it way more usable and maybe more organized for people to be able to tell what is going on because like this, it is just way, way, way too busy just like that. That is probably my one gripe and I don't know if there was an option in the backup menu that had that. I do also like the fact that in the photo backup, they by default are converting images to JPEGs that are not standard formats. So like Apple HEIF photos that would be very hard to open on Windows normally will just automatically be converted to JPEGs, which is something that anybody can read. And so I think that that is really useful default. So I like that a lot. Overall, I think it's pretty solid. I think the only audience they really missed out on on this are the people who live their lives on only an iPad and a phone. That's all they ever use. They don't actually have a laptop or a desktop that they ever plug into. I'd say that that's probably the audience that I really think they could have been very useful for. But because this is just an external SSD that needs a computer to run, it's just not possible. Maybe they can add the software to the iPad, who knows? But that is the one big piece I think they did leave out. It would be awesome if they built this thing with a battery that could just do it remotely. Though those have been done in the past and I think the battery just runs out way too quickly. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this review. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you wanna hire me for a project, there's a link for that in the description below. All right, have a good one. Bye.